One of the biggest reasons I love anime is because of the interesting stories that they tend to tell. It's not that all anime intrigues me. In fact, I dropped many anime because I find them boring. In fact, that's one of the few reasons I will drop anime. I watch most anime to completion. But I find that anime is, by and large, filled to the brim with fascinating stories that I would never find in the West. Either because Western authors just aren't that creative, or because it would get them cancelled. Last year I made a video on Redo of a Healer, which falls into the latter category, and today I want to discuss Interspecies Reviewers, which falls into the same category, albeit perhaps a little less so, maybe? If you browse the left side of Twitter when this anime was airing back in 2019, this was blatantly obvious that they were not amused. But before we get into it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel for more content in the future, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a thing, and share this video around to other places on the internet if you think it deserves it, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, among other places, to help get my channel more attention, and comment on the video down below because I'll my channel out as well. And if you're interested in AMVs, then check out my other channel, The Once Future King, because I occasionally make them over there. I have a Demon Slayer AMV as of recently, a to your Etern as well as a To Your Eternity AMV, several Fate AMVs among others. I also used to make anime reaction videos over there, and while I haven't done that in a while, you still have a lot to catch up on if you enjoy that type of video. As for this channel, once you're done with this video, then maybe consider checking out my first video, which was an analysis of the first half of the My Dress Up Darling anime. If it gets enough views, then maybe I'll consider doing a follow-up once the second season airs. But anyways, let's get- Interspecies Reviewers is an anime where some guys visit brothels, which happen to be have monster girls employed at them, have sex with them, with, with the said monster girls, and then rate and review the service that they received. As you can tell, the basic plot is very simple, and you should understand just by listening to it why it was controversial. I'm not saying that it's- good that it was controversial. It doesn't change the fact <laughs> that the left side of Twitter has walnuts for brains, but it sh still shouldn't have shocked anybody that it was inevitably going to be controversial in the West. As for me, Interspecies Reviewers is one of the most unique and interesting anime I've seen in a while. First and foremost, it's an anime where prostitutes are the in the forefront of the story or sex workers as you're supposed to call them nowadays, which is kind of confusing because I can think of at least two types of sex workers that exist, prostitutes and porn stars. Maybe if you count, maybe three if you count escorts as sex workers. But anyways, maybe part of the problem people have with it is that it uses it for comedy and, and getting people horny rather than telling completely a completely serious story about the issues the prostitutes can run into, both legal, so, and social and with their clients, and while that could potentially make an interesting story too, again in an anime, I have no interest in the pretentious garbage that some western writer would churn out with the same premise. It's not problematic just because it shows one side of being a type of sex worker that I think is still illegal in Japan and not every side. See, the writer of the manga clearly had a plan for what he wanted to do with it. As intrigued as I was, there's still a limit as to how seriously I can take it because it was obviously made to get people horny. And it succeeded, if you ask me. It's funny because I've seen way more extreme premises in actual hentai. Perhaps this one caught the eye of, of neckbeard idiots more than more than hentai because it's not technically a hentai it's borderline yes but it's a tv anime i don't know how it, in the nine rings of hell the studio managed to get this on tv in japan one of the most conservative countries in the world but they did and i am eternally grateful for that interspecies reviewers was clearly available on the 2019 seasonal anime chart, whereas hentai obviously aren't. You have to search a bit more to find out what the upcoming hentai are. So it was inherently more visible to people than, say, Rinkon Club. Look up that one if you really want to be offended. That's one of my favorites, by the way. Like I said, it's not that the anime shows no re 
real life side of being a prostitute. It just shows one side of it. The pleasure that the prostitutes as well as the customers would obviously get out of it. And that's perfectly fine considering what the series is trying to accomplish. And for the record, I think the excessive fan service not only helps to make something tingle in my nether regions, but also helps make the story seem more realistic and believable. Like I said before, there's so much hentai that's that's so much worse. At least the girls in this show appear to be having fun. Not a single one gets forced to have sex. You could see it even challenges conventional ideas of beauty, as several prostitutes are definitely not traditionally attractive. There's older ones, overweight one, and overweight ones, which makes you, which makes the cast more diverse. This is an interesting aspect and is essentially, especially something you'd think leftists would praise about the show. Guess they missed that part, and by missed I mean ignored it to fit their own agenda. If you don't like this anime, then that's perfectly fine. Art is entirely subjective after all, and when it comes to this anime in particular, some people just can't look past all of the extreme fan service that's present, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to me, this is an instance where the fan service doesn't take away from the interesting plot and world, but rather adds to it. I mean, the story is about prostitutes and the guys that have sex with them, and then review their service. The added extreme fan service in the anime actually adds a layer of realism and helps me get sucked into the world. And it's also a and it's also really funny too. I feel like the humor is massively underrated in this anime. I absolutely I laughed out loud on numerous times while watching interspecies reviewers and I don't really get into most anime comedies nowadays. That is that is anime where comedy is the sole or primary focus. I mean, there's Konosuba, and yeah, that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> so that's an exceptional praise that I can give to this series. Although, do you want to hear the funniest part about this anime? The first episode got dubbed, but after that, but after that aired, the dub was can canceled. Why? Because it was licensed, but only because the dub producers looked at the manga, which is actually considerably less graphic with its fan service. The anime overwhelmingly amped up the fan service in comparison to the manga. The producers of the dub looked at the manga and decided to license it without realizing that the manga is probably more similar to, say, High School DD, while the anime is borderline hentai. The thing. I don't get is how they didn't realize this even as they were writing the dub script. The only and only realized it when they finished recording the dub. Maybe they already signed contracts and thus had to do at least one episode. I guess that's possible. I'll admit that I know literally nothing about this sort of stuff. If you have any more insight than me, then let, yeah, I guess you can let me know in the comments. As entertaining as the series was in and of itself, the, fa the fact was... That fact was probably the funniest thing about the anime. You can even watch the dub of the first episode on the internet still, and it's surprisingly good. Come on guys, finish the dub. It needs to be done. It's funny, but also sad too, that they only ever dubbed one episode, not only because the dub work they did was shockingly good, but also because it was cancelled, because people were offended by the series. People who couldn't just ignore it and let other people enjoy it. They're they're the supporters of can cancel culture, the ultimate losers in Western society, superseded only by pedophiles, murderers, drunk drivers, and politicians. Like I said in my redo of a healer video, there's nothing wrong with having an opinion. There's nothing wrong with not liking a piece of art. Art criticism is, after all, 100% subjective. But these types of anime are always the center of political controversy in western social media. Even though it's from a completely different culture, a culture that doesn't give a damn what we think over here. And that goes for myself as well. Even the huge anime YouTubers like Mother's Basement, Super Eye Patch Wolf, and Giguk. We make videos like this because we love anime. 
and enjoy talking about it, analyzing it. But I doubt most Japanese people, whether they're the creators of these anime or the viewers, give a damn what we think, whether we're being positive or negative. But I think that's all I have to say about this topic, though. Join me next time when I decide to make a video about something controversial regarding anime, when we talk about why episode 19 of Redo of a Healer is the best of or of Rising of the Shield Hero is the best episode in the anime. And that does it for me. In the comment section down below, let me know your thoughts on this video as well as on interspecies reviewers. If you agree or disagree with any of my opinions and any other anime that you think I, I might be able to get a decent sized video out of and a click and clickbait well enough that you think I should talk about on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel for more content in the future, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a thing, because I really thing. And share this video around other places on the internet if you think it deserves it, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, among other places. Drop good on my channel more attention, and like always, comment another video down below without my channel as well. Let me know your thoughts on this video and on this topic and on this anime. And if you're interested in any of these, then check out my other channel, The Once a Future King, because I occasionally make them over there. I have a Demon Slayer AMV as of recently, as well as a Two Your Eternity AMV, several Fate AMVs, among others. I also used to make anime reaction videos over there, and while I haven't done that in a while, you still have a lot to catch up on if you enjoy that type of video. As for this channel, now that you're done with this video, perhaps consider checking out my first video, which was an analysis of the first half of My Dress Up Dar the, the My Dress Up Darling anime. If it gets enough views, then maybe I'll consider doing a follow-up when the second season airs. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you all in the next video.